everybody, and welcome to Nowey's Dive Team Report. I'm your host, Greg Martin. If you never braved cold water diving, you probably won't have an appreciation for a dry suit. Those of us who regularly make 40 to 50 degree dives year-round know that a good quality dry suit and undergarments are well worth every penny spent. And this idea of being cold on dives is just what inspired Dick Long, founder of Diving Unlimited International, or just DUI, to start the business. But before that, Dick, I'd like to know what got you into diving in the first place. After I got out of the Army, I lost a fishing lure in a lake that had given to me by a relative that was no longer alive, so I wanted to recover that. So what I did was I got a mask with a snorkels attached as part of it, and I went out and not only found my lure, but everybody else's as well, on a, hooked on an old barbed wire fence where they had flooded the lake. And uh, that in turn, I was bragging about it, and a friend of mine and said, well, that's no fun at all. You need to come with us and go see the ocean down in Monterey. Went in the ocean and fell in love with the fish that were there, and that in turn, uh, it, it was just a calling. When I when I did that, it was just, it's beyond belief, the power that that had on me at the time. So the rest is history, if you will. And then how, Dick, did that then translate over to creating dry suits for, for the dive industry? Because I was about six foot one and weighed a whole 135 pounds, and I was freezing to death. And one day I came to the conclusion that either I had to find another way or, or something else to do, because there was no way in the world one could keep going into the water like that and suffering that kind of physical abuse and expect to survive the experience. So that's what I did. At the time, very few equipment, very little equipment was available at all, let alone perfected. So uh, I started, in those days we made our suits out of kits. You, you, you got rubber in a kit form and, you, it, and they gave you some rough dimensions of the design. You then trimmed it to fit your size and then that became your, your suit. So you glued it together, on, I glued it together on the kitchen floor and the first thing I did was spill the glue on the, on the floor made a hell of a mess. I just started experimenting, and I was in the first Naui course ever, and I met other people who were divers, and they were cold, and they liked what I had, so I built one for them. And it was kind of one foot in front of the other, and uh, again, it was just kind of one opportunity in front of the other. Any time an opportunity to have anything to do with the ocean opened up, man, I jumped out with both feet. Well, and you're still that way. I, I, I know I, for a fact, yes. Yes, and I'm still that way. I want to play a part if I can, and I believe I can. Let's jump forward to uh, oh, let's 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 say five years ago, uh, the industry we were starting to see this die off of fresh fresh blood in this industry, and and maybe ten fifteen years ago. It was my belief that divers have to accept the role of responsibility for themselves when they go in the water. Once you jump off the back of the boat or, or go through the surf, the only thing you have with you is your skill set and your knowledge and your experience, and that's it. You, you don't have anything else. And therefore, you, you must make the decisions to do something or not to do something and be responsible for the results of that. And that, in turn, uh, we created the Responsible Diver Program and uh, lots of publications, etc., and warnings, if you will. And the result of that is that whenever someone would, would file a lawsuit against the diving industry, the first thing the defense would ask is, are you familiar with the Responsible Diver Program? Of course they are. Well, what one of those rules did your client break? And it brought the lawsuits pretty much down to nothing or very little. Lawsuits are no longer the biggest problem, and, and they were certainly holding us back there for a while. You say something about people who dive as opposed to being divers. Divers. Explain right. that to me. Our industry is really quite good at, and television helps us, Jacques Cousteau helped us, uh, uh, creating the aura about diving. And diving is exciting, and, and it's the ocean, and, and everybody ought to go visit and see it. Okay, so we bring people in to diving. Bring people in, we teach them how to clear their mask. When they graduate, we give them a little plastic card. Where do they go? What do they do? Who do they dive with? So therefore, I call those individuals people who dive. They do dive. They go diving once, twice, but one year later, only about 15% of them go in the ocean again diving. They never were in diving long enough to learn what it is, what it looks like, what it's like to be down there and, and run face-to-face -face with a black sea bass. We have divers and we have people who dive. And the people who dive 
only go diving for a short period of time, and then they quit. I want to take all of the people who dive out there and turn them into divers, get them so they are not only comfortable in the ocean, uh, they're, they're competent and competent in their skill set, but they enjoy the hell out of what they're doing. Dick, the one thing I've always gotten from you, you're not just the guy who makes dry suits. Well, I appreciate that, sir. Thank you. Let's talk for just a sec about that DUI company. How do you stay on top? Where's the innovation come from? I believe necessity is the mother of invention. We have a problem, and we have to solve that problem. Look, we make about 6,000 dry suits a year. Well, 6,000 suits of all kinds, not just dry suits. And they last an average of 10 years. We have many of them are much more than 10 years old, out and still in service in the field. And every year, some of those suits come back in a body bag. And that's a fact. And what it does, I pick up all of the information on the accidents that occur, and I will go through it, and I want to know, why did that happen? What happened? I want to make sure that the suit had nothing to do with it. Then how do we make it so that problem can't happen again? Yes, I'm always looking for a product that we can sell and that sort of thing, but I'm really trying to solve a problem. You are talking earlier about divers being cold, and that's always one of our issues, and you now have the blue heat system, which that's right. is nice to be warm, huh? Yeah, with blue heat, uh, you can take your power supply with you. I mean, it changes everything. You know, how long you want to stay? All we have to do is have power supply. But what we're trying to do is find a way to get the price of blue heat down so an ordinary diver can use it. Well, hey, Dick, I appreciate the longevity that you've had in this industry. I appreciate the leadership that you've had in this industry. All I can do is wish you a great many more years of happy diving. My fins are wet, my friend. As long as I've been diving, I still see things I've never seen before. All you got to do is be observant because the ocean's got so much life in it, so much down there. There's just so much there that that, uh, I will never get to see it all. I will never get to see it all, but let me tell you, I'm sure going to try. Well, thanks, Dick. And if you have an interest in seeing the exciting world underwater or you're someone who was certified years ago and want to get back in, be sure and drop by your local Naui Dive Shop or visit online at Naui, N-A-U-I dot O-R-G. And that's this episode of Naui's Dive Team Report. I'm Greg Martin. Thanks for listening. I'll see you underwater. Underwater.